This is Andy Porrow for Boxing News. I'm John Boy, one of British boxing's favourite sons, Ricky Hatton, here in Telford. Ricky, always a pleasure. And I have to say, from, straight from the off, I am loving that jacket there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. I, all, the, all the pasties I can eat for the rest of my life. So I thought it was tough at the top, but I'm still there, I guess. Sponsored by Greg. So. Um, Ricky, we're here in Telford, obviously, with the box off, a new format, a new style to boxing. Um, you're going to be leading kind of in, it's one of the teams up north. Walk me through your hopes, your desires, what you're hoping to see from tomorrow night. And just, just opportunities for the, you know, for the people involved. I mean, hopefully at Manchester, I hope we beat Yorkshire. That goes without saying. But I mean, it's an opportunity for people that might not have gone. You know, we'd all like a, a contract of Sky Sports or BT or Eddie Hearn or Frank Warren, but it doesn't quite happen to some people and they got an opportunity you know to springboard the career <clears throat> maybe get more fights more opportunities more sponsorship it's a winner all way because i mean I, i'm a little bit um disappointed in boxing at the minute to be honest with you it gets me gets me down a little bit but this is real grassroots boxing you know genuine men genuine ladies that are struggling you know and and, you, and they're, they're gonna get you know gonna get an opportunity and you know <clears throat> I just think um, lately when I watch the boxing and that, that it just, just gets me down. I think I'm from an era where I'm probably, probably the last era <laughs> before the social media era, you know, come on where, you know, it was all about, you know, of course you want to make your money, but fighting the best and being the best and getting the opportunity and taking it by two hands, you know, <clears throat> they've got an opportunity here to make something better for their careers, haven't they? So, I mean, this is this is proper boxing for me. Boxing lately, you know, on the on the big stage, it's a bit of a circus, I think. I'll come on to that shortly, but just to kind of stick with um, tomorrow night. Do you feel that extra bit of a competitive um, rivalry because of yourself going up against your your friend there, Johnny Nelson? Yeah, yeah. To be honest with you, listen, you know that that's what makes the concept very, very interesting. To be honest with you, you know, we're all proud from the counties. Nobody banged the drum for Manchester more than me. I was very proud. You know, I you know, I literally. It wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it for Manchester, and I think you know if you're from, that adds a little bit of rivalry because Mancunians, <coughs> excuse me, don't want to get beat by Scousers, you know, and Londoners don't want to get beat by Brummies, and Yorkshire don't want to get, you know, don't want to get beat by Lancashire, you know, and I think that adds a little bit of spice to where it's from because you know if you like me, which I like to think they all are, I, I, you know, I think you know you want to you want to do it for yourself to spring your career and do it for your county, you know, so you know. Um, <coughs> It adds a little bit of spice for the fans as well. The fans, you know, yeah. Ricky, you mentioned kind of how you used to beat the drum for Manchester. Um, I don't think anybody will replicate what you achieved and obviously the support you had uh, when you was fighting. But is it maybe a surprise to you all that maybe you haven't seen that next star yet come through? Or is, are you expecting maybe somebody <coughs> who's on the verge of that, who can start re being that leading man to bring those nights back? I hope so. I think times have got to change a little bit. You know, I, um, I often think of it, I'm so proud of my fan base. But I often think to myself, I mean, well, what fan base would have had it if the social media was about? But, but um, the point is, just, you know, social media is about, it's all getting followers up and do something controversial or something like that, you know. Nobody, so nobody, no, there's, no, there's not another British fighter that will go to Las Vegas and sell tickets like I sold tickets, even in this social media era. And it wasn't because of all the palaver or anything like that it's because I was just a down to earth genuine guy that, that was good at me fighting and thanked me fans and everything like that and you know so but I mean is the, is the one coming through I hope there's someone coming through from, from Manchester that can do the city proud like 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 I did and I know Tyson Fury's done massive you know to, to make you know to have the heavyweight champion of the world the best heavyweight in the world for Manchester is fantastic but I think, you know, times need to change. You know, the area, you know, it's just, you know, sometimes I watch boxing now and I feel like just turning the TV off, which is a bit embarrassing when I'm so proud of, you know, for what the sport did to me. You just mentioned Tyson Fury there. He's obviously coming up for a fight with uh, Francis Ngani, who's a former, M well, former MMA star. Um, does that fall into the category of what you say with boxing becoming a circus for crossover about This is boxing and MMA, but... Tyson unfairly has been... Um, saying, oh, he's from a different sport and everything like that. But, you know, if you look at the main prospects, you know, you've got, you know, Usage fought Daniel Dubois, you've got Deontay Wilders fighting Joshua, I, I believe. So, you know, all the, all the rivals are all spoken for. 
I mean, you know, I love Derek Chisora, you know, as, as, as we all do, but, you know, we don't want to see Tyson fight Derek again and, and then that, that level. So, you know, when you, if you look at it from, um, this is probably the best opponent out there for, you know, in order to, for it to be an, an occasion, you know, um, because all the, all the ones we want Tyson to fight, they're already spoken for. So what, what do you expect Tyson to do? We can't just say, you know. So I, um, I think it would certainly be interesting. And then moving on from that, hopefully, we can get the fights we all want. How disappointed would you be if we didn't see, say, Fury Usyk next year or Fury Joshua or <coughs> even Fury Wilder 4? I'm sure people would love to see that. <coughs> it, you know, it'd be disappointing. And it's like I said, you know, boxing disappoints me some lately. Is because of the carry-ons that go on and the fact that the um, people would wa rather watch him fight him than a, than the number one, number two heavyweights in the world. You know, what I mean, oh, and, and boxing needs to put its finger out of its backside and get the right fights made and stuff like that because it's it's damaging the sport. You know, it's like you know, you know. Fighters that would rather, you know, because they can earn more money fighting a YouTuber, would rather do that than fight for the world title now. That is damaging for our sport, you know. So hopefully, you know, the right fights will be made, you know, and um, and boxing come out. I think boxing needs to make a major comeback, me. I do. Obviously, one of the other big talking points at the minute are the amount of failed tests which are coming through. What's been your thoughts on all of these, the failed uh, drug tests within boxing, which have started to come out now? Um, obviously, you had Conor Ben um, last year, that's still ongoing. Alicia Baumgartner, Robert Helania stepped in to replace Dillian White when he fought AJ. He had a positive test return as well. It just seemed to be one thing after another. What's been your thoughts on, on that side? I don't know. I mean, I can't really comment on that. I mean, I mean, it only seems to happen in boxing, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, But I think... Um, and you know, if if ever if there was ever a sport where drug tests need to be absolutely bang on, it's when you're in a sport like boxing where you're putting your health on the line. It's massive, you know. I don't I don't know what the answer is, and there's that's for the governing bodies and the border control and and, and you know to, to sort out. But I just um, I just think you know, but it's critical that boxing get these drug test sorted out because you know you know football you get a kick on the ankle you know what i mean you know tennis you you know pull your shoulder out boxing you can get hurt you can get hurt you can die so get it sorted out you know what i mean i know you're a fighting man you're a fighting family as well ricky so is it any more concerning for you knowing that your son campbell's obviously stepping between the ropes and he's at a very early stage of his career uh, we know the risks you know and um, like i did and campbell knows the risks but I mean, uh, whether you'd have one fight, under one fight, I think if you go in boxing, you come out of it the better man. So, no, I'm uh, no concerns. I obviously brick it when my son fights, goes without saying, brick it more than most. But um, no, he's uh, he's doing well. He's doing proud. He's doing himself proud. He's earning a living. He's he's improving all the time. Uh, I'm very very proud of him. Just whilst I've got you, Ricky, moving away from that, we saw Chris Eubank Jr. defeat Liam Smith a couple of weeks ago. Um, what did you make of his performance in that? I, you know, he went up very much in my estimations, to be honest with you. I mean, apart from Billy Joe Saunders and George Groves, I didn't think he'd, he'd fought anyone or beat anyone. And when he was talking in the manner he spoke about, I thought, Jesus Christ, I mean, I won four world titles and I didn't speak like you, Chris. <laughs> so that, 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 was, that was going through, you know, my... Um, my, my head but I mean to get knocked out like he did you know against Liam the first time and to come back and put such a dominating performance on I mean not, not, not without a few warm up fights in between straight away straight back in with Liam and to put the performance on he did he went up so much in my um, so much in my estimations and obviously there's some big um, Big fights on the horizon now, and to be honest with you, you know he, he he deserved it. You know, I mean, everyone was, you know, after Liam beat him the first time, everyone was a bit, you know, oh, you know, well, no, look how he come back. Fair play to you, Chris. Fair play. Um, obviously, just one of those fights being Conor Ben. What would be your thoughts if Junior and Ben were to come to terms and there's talk of a potential December bout taking place between them now? Is it also bigger because of everything that's happened since their fight being cancelled last October? It's massive. You know, you know, controversy in boxing is comes with the territory, doesn't it? You know what I mean? You know, one, because of the history. Liam got beat. Uh, and Chris got beat by Liam. Then he come back and won fantastic. We had the, the, um, 
the, the failed drug test, you know, by Connor, and now he's come, you know, you know, it, you know, I mean, there's one thing you can say about boxing, it's never boring, is it, you know, to be honest with you, but I think, um, I think that would be a massive, 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 massive fight. At first, they were famous, they were both famous because of the dads, but now, you know, it, 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 you know, I, 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 just, I just think it'd be one of the biggest British boxing fights in years, I really do. A man who's fought your brother and is returning uh, in a couple of weeks' time, Canelo. I just want to get your thoughts, Ricky. When he fought your brother, um, were you ever surprised by how far his career has gone? No, to be honest with you, I think um, um, Floyd Mayweather created a, um, created a monster, didn't he? You know what I mean? Mayweather absolutely boxed his absolute lugs off, didn't he? You know what I mean? And he's come back when you think one of the best pound for pound fighters. I mean, when you, you, know, you look through the history, I mean, I don't think he'd be the best, but he'd be up there. You know what I mean? He's one hell of a, uh, one hell of a fighter. You know, and um, the fact that my brother went the distance with him when he's knocked out so many quality fighters makes me feel very, very proud of my brother. Just a final one. Wood Warrington, can I just get your thoughts on that fight, please, Ricky? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's a 50-50 fight. It's very, very close. Um, you know, I'm friends with both Lee and Josh. I think it would be. Um, I think it'd be an absolute barnstormer of a fight. You know, they've both got great, great styles. I can't help but be um, exciting. So, I, you know, I, I just, um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm away with my, um, my, my friends getting married, <laughs> away in Tenerife, so I can't be there. And it's, um, it's, um, it's pissed me off, to be honest with you, because, I mean, what a, what a fight that would be. But I wish them both all the best. I think it's a toss of coin one. Well, Ricky, I hope you can find somewhere to watch it on the night and I appreciate you doing this interview. Thank you and good luck tomorrow. Yeah, mate, no problem.